Hi everybody, it's Crystal M. Compton. How are you doing today? I am joining you today for what I'm calling Conscious Coffee, just a drink of eternal enlightenment. What I'm really here to do is just talk to you, just to chat. This is not a video where I'm teaching you something you really need to know in order to shift your life right now. This is rather just a, a video that I'm making today, wanting to talk to you, wanting to talk about some things that are going on in the world and also that are going on um, in my life. I'm gonna start first by saying that this room is not just housing me, no. I actually have all my three Great Danes in here. That's Koa, who's, oh look, that's Koa and Sunshine. Can you just, for a second, can you just, I love them so much, I can't even. Koa is gonna be six years old this year. Sunshine, the girl, is three years old. And then we have Wilford Brimley, who's, um, the, not he's a middle child. Um, but he's very, very sweet and gentle, unless he doesn't know who you are. And he's over there, and I'm not going to pan, because then you're going to see how crazy it is over there. We don't want that. But anyway, I'm here with my dogs. I'm here to just chat with you and let you know a few things coming up and such. So I love this space. I have worked in this space. I often tell lightworker practitioners, do your work kind of in the same space every single day. Do your meditation in the same space. Do your um, attunements in the same space. Do your readings and things of that nature in the same space because every time you're in that space and then you hook into source energy or spirit energy, the vibe of that space raises to accommodate source energy or to accommodate high divine energy. And soon you'll find you'll just walk in here and you're channeling <laughs> or you'll just walk in here and you're so super connected because the space is gridded a certain way. And that's what's happening in this space, which I love. I love the colors. I love everything in here. But the first thing I wanna tell you is I'm gonna be moving. I'm gonna be losing this studio because I'm gonna be moving from this house down closer to the city. Some of you don't know, but I live in bum F North Texas. <laughs> I live in the boonies for real. And I, I can't see my neighbors, I mean, for miles. And all I hear at night are coyotes and mooing. Like I'm really secluded, really isolated. It's really beautiful here actually though. I live on five acres of property with about a thousand oak trees and all kinds of nature elementals and tree spirits and fairies and stuff. There's just, it's a magical place, but that's the nature of nature. Nature is always gonna be holding that super high vibration of Gaia. And Gaia, source has shown me, is archangel, it's archangelic. Gaia is like an archangel. The signature of Gaia is very similar in strength, divinity, and power as Archangel Michael, Archangel Raphael, the most powerful angels of them all. Gaia, earth energy, has the same signature. So if you go outside and then you go hug a tree, you are literally allowing your energy to soak up archangelic energy. This is why people love to hug trees. It's not just because they're hippies, it's because they feel it and they can sense it, right? And when we're out in nature, we feel more connected to the divine. In fact, nature bears witness to the fact that there is a creator. Because when you're outside and looking at the leaves on the trees and how the birds like to perch and how the birds drop their seeds that they're eating to, to um, drop to the soil and then soon flowers grow and then it rains and like everything is so synergistic and synergetic out in nature. There's a, you can see the design of it is what I'm saying. When you see something so intricately designed, you know there's a designer. I'm not talking about creationism, please. I'm just talking about the fact that everything has a reason, everything has a purpose, and nature is so high vibration. So I love it here, but I'm moving. And I'm moving to a residence which, well, to put it mildly, is very, very dated, you know? thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of work in order to sort of bring it up to what we would want it to be. And so I'm moving into a space that 
is definitely a great property. It, it, it's in my husband's family. We're, we're purchasing it from his, his grandparents. But you know, old people, they have their own design sensibilities. It's, it's a lot of wall paneling, you know what I mean? And arches and so popcorn ceilings. So we have things to, <laughs> to do. And I'm gonna miss this place because I'd walk you around and I'd show you, but this place is pretty awesome. It's um, just for my husband and I and my daughter and her wife when they come over, but it's um, very open, lots of sunlight, big patio, you know what I mean? So you can just sit out there in nature and very, very minimalist. I don't like a lot of clutter. Like my version of ideal home living is one wooden table with an orchid on it and that's it. <laughs> Cause I don't, I like energy. And if you have too much clutter in your space, then that energy of the clutter is expressing out that chaos into the space. People who live in like hoarding homes, people who live in really disorganized homes, homes that are not uh, clean or with too much stuff, you can feel that chaotic energy when you walk in. And a lot of times you'll also notice these people who live in these hoarding houses and um, really, really disastrous, messy, unclean houses also have like depression or also have energetic issues, maladies, if you will, anxiety, things of that nature. It's, because, it's feeding off of each other. The, the energy of the disorganization feeds off of the energy of the depression, which feeds off of the energy of the disorganization, disorganization and so on and so forth. So my house here is set up in such a way that I really love. I'm so very grateful. The only problem with here is that I don't have internet. That should be a crime. That should be a municipality. We should, I know Comcast and all of these monopolistic giants, AT&T, they dominate the Wi-Fi, they dominate the internet, they dominate access to stuff. I really think we should turn this over to municipalities and they're doing that in Texas because you know Texas is like, F all y'all, we will do what we want. And I think they're doing it, they're trying to do it in Colorado. They're just trying to make another option so people have access, but I have no access out here. I literally have three megabytes up, a download and one megabyte upload. That means when I wanna upload this video, which I will do later on, it's gonna take a really long time and it's unreasonable. And everything I do is online. My whole presence is online. My lab is online. My classes are online and I can't really afford to not be able to access my, my internet. So in this new home, we've already powered it up with internet, it's fiber. I don't know what that means, but it, I think it's, it's supposed to be really good. And I think we're gonna get 500 up, 500 down. I can, it's like Star Wars. It's like Star Trek. I can't even conceive of it. I'm so excited. My plans, therefore, are to be up on YouTube a lot more. I also wanna explore places like Twitch. I don't know anything about it. I thought it was just for gamers, but I know people actually live stream on Twitch and I wanna do more live streams. I did one live stream on YouTube last summer. I don't know if any of you saw that. I was on for many hours. And while it was really awesome connecting with those of you who were there uh, for the right reasons, I was trolled mercilessly. And I was trolled by bots. You know, now they have these um, bots which will just inundate you with terrible comments. And it really, it didn't shake me, but it just wore me out. And I don't, want to do a live stream where we've got trolls. I don't know what we can do. I don't know if Twitch is a place where we can go and be together without trolls. I'm going to try and figure it all out <clears throat> and see what works best for us. But I plan on interacting with you more. That's my dream. That's what I want to do. So soon we will be doing that. The next thing I wanted to talk to you about was my video that I put up yesterday. That video is called, I am ready to go. If you haven't seen that video, I would encourage you to see it because I think there's a powerful, powerful message in the video for everybody. I would also ask and encourage you to please share that video because here's what's up. I have 17,000 subscribers and I'm grateful and you guys are awesome, but we need to have more subscribers because the message that we're going to be sharing and we talk about it, you and I, we talk about it, and, and, I, and I share as I am led to, is really, really important. And people need to hear it. 
People need in, in, on this planet, in this world, to feel hope. They do. People need to feel like there's something to look forward to or there's a way that I can control this. There's, a, there's something I can do about my situation. People really need a refreshing on the planet and that's what I want to do. I don't want to grow my um, YouTube channel because I want to make money. No, that's not, I make money in other ways. I just want the avenues necessary to get the message out to people. So if you can let people know who I am or share my video or just like my video because sometimes just liking it is really, really helpful. I would really appreciate it. Let's grow this platform so that we can disseminate the message. But in my video yesterday, if you watched it, you, you will have noted that towards the end I said, I was feeling, I had, I had felt uncertain. Once I had connected to what my message was and my mission statement for my whole life, once I finally connected to it at this late date, by the way, only recently have I connected to it, there was this moment where the spirit trembled. <laughs> the spirit was like, oh, that's a powerful message. This is powerful energy. Am I a worthy vessel? Like, well, look around, look at my life. I don't get it all right. I do a lot of things wrong. I'm, I'm a constant work in process. Am I the right one? And so we do that a lot as spiritual people, especially practitioners. We always kind of scan for our worthiness and whether we're, whether we're doing our work excellently and, and whether we should be even doing the work. Are we frauds? Are we making it up? Did I say the right thing? Like, the reason light workers and spiritual people often doubt themselves is because they have massive integrity and they want to do the right thing. They don't want to blow it. They want to make sure that their message is heard and heard in the right way. And so I did have this space and time. It was December, part of January, where I was like, um, oh, me, really? Which is kind of funny because I'm normally never like that. I'm just like, me, really? But I did have that period of time and I shared that with you in the video yesterday and I just want you to know that I don't occupy that space <coughs> normally, okay? It's usually me, really, I am ready to go. But I also want to say, when you come into contact with divine energy, energy that is straight from source energy, straight from the I am of the I am. When you work in, on, in that level of energy, it really doesn't matter what the vessel is. <laughs> it really doesn't matter that the physical instrument of Crystal Ann Compton could be 15 pounds thinner or should be reading these books and Crystal Ann Compton could be doing, no. The energy of source fills the vessel and allows the vessel to be it. So even though I have all my stuff, just like you have all your stuff, and even though I have my bad days, when I hook into the energy of source and when I am standing fully in the power of my purpose, it's the energy that is being expressed, the energy of that purpose, the energy of that blueprint, the energy of that source that people are feeling. It has nothing to do with me. See, that's the trap of 3D reality for real, is we, it's so easy to click out of awareness of I am, divine nature, super consciousness, and into Crystal Ann Compton, worthiness, money, health, 15 pounds. It's easy to kind of slip out of that alignment and get back into 3D reality. The key here is to notice that you've done that and then get right back into alignment and understand who it is that you are. And it's also really normal to doubt. It's, it's especially when you are dealing with great things, especially when you are dealing with transformational concepts, templatry, all of that is, of course, you're going to stand in awe of it in your little 3D incarnation iteration, but that's okay. You're being called to it in whatever form it's showing up in your life. You are being called to it. And you know what? Spirit never calls us for anything unless we have all the tools we need to do the job. Like Spirit's never going to call you to be a preacher if you don't know how to speak or you don't have a facility in that area. Spirit is never going to call you to be the person who writes that one book that changes the world, like The Secret, 
if you can't write and if that's not your talent. But if you're feeling a calling in a specific direction, like you're being called to become a Reiki practitioner, you're being called to be more charitable, spirit never does that unless you have everything you need already in order to fulfill the task. See, the thing is, is that a lot of the tools, a lot of the resources that we have to do what spirit is asking us to do lie dormant until we take the step. What do I mean by that? This is, this is powerful. Coffee, please. With purpose, we usually always have kind of a sense of it. And it can be very general. Like I want to, you know, we are the world. I want to get out there and, and help people. Or I want to, I, I would love to bring resources. Or I would love to heal with energy or work with chakras. We have kind of a sense of it. But when we are sensing it and we're not standing in it, the sensing of it is the call. It's spirit going, crystal, crystal, how does this feel? And there's a quickening that takes place. There's a quickening that takes place in the spirit when you contemplate actually occupying your purpose. So my purpose as I see it is to get up and to communicate and to do it in a certain way. And when I think about doing it in a certain way, I feel like, ooh, <gasps> excited about it. I also feel a little fear. I think it was Elizabeth Gilbert who said, if it doesn't scare you just a little, it's not big enough. It's not big enough. So it should kind of give you those butterflies in your belly, but you feel it. And when you land on it in the consciousness, if you're running through all the things that you maybe should be doing with your life, when you land on the right one, if you're paying attention to the physical body, you'll know it. There'll be a little tingle. There'll be a quickening. There'll be a catch of the breath. There'll be something because spirit's going to let you know, bing, 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 go in that direction. But when this happens, when you realize this is where you're going, you might look around. You might look at yourself. You should, as a light worker, you should have integrity and, and know what you're working with. And you might say, but you know what? I don't have everything I need right now for that. Like I don't have the facility to be a public speaker. I, I don't know anything about that. Or I, I don't have the facility right now to whatever it is for you. That's because you haven't moved in the direction of it yet. Once you take the steps in the direction of that which is calling you, these resources and tools and faculties and abilities and talents and gifts begin to emerge. You might be three years into occupying your purpose before the next set of tools and resources opens up to you. And you didn't even know you had them, but you had them all along because you brought them in with you when you incarnated. When we incarnate, we bring essentially a toolbox. We have all of the talents we need. We have all of the capacity that we need to come here and kill it. We also incarnate with all the resources in terms of emissaries that we need. Our emissaries are our angels, our guides, those energies and friends and spirit that are here to help us. And when we land on what our life purpose is, like when we say, oh, okay, I get it. This is my message. This is what I'm supposed to do. That's when they start jumping up for joy. Yay! Crystal's almost 50 and she found it finally and you feel that too and you feel all these things activating in your environment and within yourself but you might doubt you might doubt that's okay it's not about you I used to be afraid to speak in front of people and I still get nervous to do so a little but when I got with the reality that they're not here for me <laughs> <laughs> as nice as my hair might be, right? As, as nice as my outfit might be, they're not here for me. No, not really. They're here for the energy. They've been attracted to the message. The message isn't mine. I'm just a vessel for it. I have nothing to do with this, therefore. Get out of your way, Crystal. That's ego. All the doubt, all the, the worry, all the self-worth stuff, ego, ego, ego. If you allow spirit to fully occupy, that's all you, that, you have succeeded. You have succeeded. Let spirit do it. Let spirit do the speaking. Let spirit do the writing. Let spirit do the healing. Let spirit lead you to that one moment that you need to show up into so that you can change somebody's life. When spirit is at the helm and leading, we have nothing to worry about. And so I kind of just let myself off the hook. Yeah, I'm a human. I'm going to get things wrong. Sometimes I'll get them very wrong, <laughs> but it doesn't matter because I get out of my way. If I'm standing in front of you 
in front of an audience, I get out of my way and I just say, okay, here we go, spirit. It's all on you. And that's the power of the true life purpose. It's spirit led. It's source led. It's always heart oriented. And at the end of the day, it, it requires nothing but you relinquishing control of the self and all that goes with it, the narratives and such, and letting God do what God knows how to do. God knows how to do what God knows how to do. God knows how to perform miracles. God knows how to adjust and attune and up-level and provide. God knows how to heal. That's all part of God's attribute, his aspects, his characteristics. They come part and parcel with source energy or God energy. And when we truly learn how to get out of our own way, that all that stuff shows up. All of it shows up. So I don't live in a space of doubt. I try to catch myself early enough to say, okay, Crystal, that's a doubtful narrative. And that's not rooted in source because I can do all things through God who empowers me. I change that a little. It's a scripture. I change it a little to suit, I think, the spirit of what is, is trying to be relayed. But I can do all things. And... If I can dream it, I can do it. And we have to spend time giving ourselves over to the dreaming of it as well. So I've seen the pieces of my life. I've seen them kind of adjusting. And through my whole 30s and part of my 40s, they didn't make much sense. You know, I saw the moving part over here, the moving part, but they didn't really connect. Now they're starting to connect. Now I see where we are going and it's very exciting. The other thing I wanted to do was talk about up ender. A lot of you on YouTube have no idea what I'm talking about. And here is a great example of how Crystal Ann Compton gets it wrong. What is up ender? Well, at the beginning of the year, I decided to make an overhaul to my health because Let's talk about, I'm going to write it down. I cannot forget to talk to you about this. So powerful. Energetic illnesses that are passed down from, ge from generation to generation. Hereditary misalignments that are passed down from generation to generation. Because people call those familiar spirits, family spirits, curses. And some of that I've got. And I'll tell you why in a little bit. But anyway, I'm about to turn 50. That's kind of a big deal. Um, it's really surreal actually you know i remember my mom always saying when she was in her 50s i feel like i'm 18 like i literally feel like i'm 18 in my head not that i'm immature but i i don't see myself any differently like age is really just a construct of the 3d reality right it's just part of this illusion and so she just never felt it and, and most older people will say i don't really feel as old as i am but five zero that's sobering that's a sobering number for anybody, and it is for me. And so I've been thinking about, first of all, this calling that I am being led into and saying yes to and moving toward. And then I'm thinking about, I have to be able to do it though. Like I have to have the physical stamina and strength to actually fulfill this call and do this work. Otherwise, I'm gonna wink out of this existence before I get it all done, and there's so much to do. And so I have to focus on me. And I've, I, I do a lot of things wrong just generally as a habit. Um, but one of the things that I am, I don't want to say plagued with because that feels powerful. It's not powerful. But one of the things I am always dealing with, like always, is this energetic curse, really, that was placed upon me. And it was spoken into me from the time I was a very young child. And in specific, and my mother didn't mean to do this. My mother was a lovely woman. I love her so much forever, mommy, I love you. But she didn't mean to do it. But she did it. She spoke this curse into me. And now, and it got into the bricks. It was spoken into me at such a fundamental time, right? When we're kids, our brain is forming and fusing. And the stuff that's inputted during that time it gets rooted really deep in there, really deep in there. And you'll see as you, as you do your own work and start getting into the beliefs and getting into the patterns, you'll go like, where did that come from? It's been there the whole time. So what my mother spoke into me was a belief about myself 
that I have not yet been able to shake. Let's confess it. I, I love it because I notice it in my own brain. And when I notice it, I get, I get a little bit upset with myself. Like, why are you thinking these thoughts? Those aren't the right thoughts to think. Judging something never helps it, but I, I'm flabbergasted sometimes that given everything I know about s s the law of attraction and spirit and frequency, like why am I actually having these thoughts? So what's the thought? The thought is that I'm gonna die early. What a lovely thing to tell your daughter, mom. That's awesome. From as far back as I can remember, my mom would say, every single woman on my mother's side of the family has died really early. She would say, my grandmother died when she was in her 50s. My mother died when she was in her 50s. My mother fully expected to die in her 40s and 50s. And because of that, and because of the transmission of this energy, I, in the back of my mind, have always felt like I'm gonna die in, in my 40s or 50s. And that is a lie from the pit of hell. I mean, maybe I will, but it's this, this script that's always kind of going. And when I notice it, I stop, I uproot it, I insert something positive in there. But because it's still in there, it's like there's this drive in me, this drive in me to be as healthy as possible because I might not have a lot of time on this planet. And wouldn't it be weird if I passed away in the next two years and it was true? <laughs> I hope it's not true, but I wanna be healthy. And another, um, another curse that's been put into me by myself is the curse of cancer because my witnessing of my uncle's cancer, my uncle Jerry, was so traumatizing that it became like the worst thing to worry about. Like the, the worst final outcome was that. And so that's powerful when you fear something and you reserve a little space in your body, in your heart, in your mind to fear something, well, that thing is active. It's always talking to you passively, but it's always talking to you. And if it's talking to you, you're receiving it. Consciousness is gonna be receiving it. The body receives it. The body is always listening. The body is always listening to everything that you're thinking and everything that you're saying. What you don't understand maybe is that the body doesn't just passively listen and say, well, that's just a stupid thought crystal or that's a great thought crystal. No, the body, takes these narratives, these thoughts, these doings that you do as a directive. Oh, okay. Crystal saying, God, I'm fat. Let me be fat. Crystal saying, I'm afraid of having cancer. And that begins to impact the body. How many of you out there, please drop down in the comments, can recognize hereditary energetic curses that you're dealing with that have been implanted into you by somebody else. And curses is one of those words, again, like plagued, that feels like it has a lot of power. It doesn't have any power. There's no power higher than I am and source energy. And you, my friend, are not this body. You are not this life. You are not your bank account. You are super consciousness. You are I am consciousness. So there's no lower level energy as compared to I am consciousness, that's going to impact I am consciousness. It just won't. There's no power there. And so in your spiritual development, as you learn to connect to your divine nature, who it is that you truly are, and what you are truly capable of, your own personal healing, spontaneous healing, and the healing of others, you will realize this curse isn't a thing. I can get rid of it. Um, and so I've done work around that. So the curse is not something that'll always be with you. You can learn how to put yourself into high vibration frequency and high vibration circumstances that will burn away the patterns, the psychology, the dissonance that you house within yourself, some of which you don't even know about. The energy of God, if you allow it through your lifestyle, through your mind, if you allow the energy of source to stream into you, through meditation or prayer or dancing and singing, through connection, through study, through fellowship. However, if you just give source some time, some space in your body to flood you with light, source will touch upon all these patterns. Source will find the curses, find the dis dissonance, find whatever it is that doesn't serve you that you might not even know about and burn it out. 
because the energy signature is so much higher. Getting goosebumps. Thank you, spirit. The energy si signature of source is so much higher. So if we're just making time through our spiritual practices and our understanding to let God's light shine into our lives, God will do the work. I just said, God knows how to do what God knows how to do. Let God do it by letting God in. So curses have no power is what I'm saying. Does that mean I don't deal with it? It means I do. I have practices in place. I have disciplines, mental disciplines in place to take care of it. And this is just kind of a long way of me to explain why I ended up starting something called the upender. I am conscious and cognizant about my health. I am that that cancer thing is always kind of in the background or it'll pop up at certain times after I figure I, after I feel I have defeated it and it'll show up again and so I just defeat it again that's all you do you just keep doing it until it's done and meanwhile I don't point my interest at it I don't sit there for three hours thinking oh my god I'm gonna get cancer oh my god I need to lose 15 pounds and oh my god I'm not healthy I don't spend time pointing my interest at it when I notice I'm fixated on something negative boop I turn it around to source energy. That's my reminder. Thank you, actually. Thank you, weird, cursy thought. That's my reminder to look this way to source energy and let source energy shine and burn it all out. But, like, I'm also a human. I go to the doctor. I'm on medications. I'm getting older. And so I want to be here. I want to be here for a while. I don't know if I will. Tomorrow is promised to nobody. And if I'm not here tomorrow or next year or the 10 years from now, that's okay. I feel like I could check out right now and feel real good about what I've learned here in this life. But I do want to be as strong as possible for what God is asking me to do. I do want to be as healthy as possible, as clear as possible in the head, in the body, in the spirit to relay and transmit what God would have me to relay and transmit. So I have to be healthy. A healthy, clean, detoxified body is a high vibration body. It just is. It is. Now, some of us have issues around sickness and unwellness, and that's beyond our control. You can still do things, though, to reach that higher vibration. But for the most part, as far as the body is concerned, if you want a fine-tuned tuning fork psychic instrument, psychic just means receiving something that's outside of ourselves, which it's not, it's inside, but that's all that means. If you want to have a fully operative, <laughs> intuitive system, the healthier you are, the easy it is for that system to run well. So on January 1st, I made the decision that I would undertake this radical protocol in order to get healthy. Lose a little weight would be nice, but just really to get healthy. My husband had purchased for me, God bless him, an infrared sauna. I'm so grateful. And I was aware of specific protocols. For example, the niacin protocol um, with charcoal. You can take niacin, open up those blood vessels. You can exercise, start sweating out. The toxins come out, charcoal binds, and all this jazz. And then get in the sauna, and boy, you're detoxifying. So I had all this stuff that I was going to do. And I was always also going to eat in a really disciplined manner, not in a way that was out of alignment, but kind of in a spiritual, cognizant, self-aware way. And I, I wrote it all out. I had the plans. I told everybody I was going to do it. I said, I'm doing it. Do you guys want to come with me on my journey? And I'll tell you what happens. And I mean, about 200 people signed up to follow me about that. And typical Crystal Ann Compton, I made it about two weeks. I made it about two weeks. As it turns out, there was so many moving parts and facets of this protocol that I, it was beyond my ability as a disorganized personality generally to figure out how to do all the things each and every day. Um, so I, I had placed on myself a lot of responsibility to do a lot of different things each day, several times a week. We're talking castor oil packs, we're talking the sauna, we're talking the niacin, we're talking all kinds of different things. And I had put that pressure on myself and I'm not an organized person generally. I like to flow. Let's get in a boat and just 
flow. That's what I like to do. I don't like to plan out too much. I never go to Cancun and then just get on all the tours and go to all the marketplaces. No, I'm just gonna be in the water. I'm gonna be on the beach. I'm just gonna be chilling, I'm flowing. That's my nature. And so I set up a protocol for myself that really went against my nature. So those of you who followed me, and I'm speaking to the lab right now for sure, like, cause I know a lot of you are there, do know that I've incorporated probably about a 25% of all those protocols that I put into place. And when I say incorporated, I mean I've created a practice and a discipline out of doing those things. These are things I didn't do before that I now do. The 75% that remains, I'm going to slowly add into my life as I can. But I make, <sighs> I make no promises. Food for me is like one of my things. I think it was Sarah Ferguson, Duchess of York, who said, I will have a problem with my weight for the rest of my life. It's just what I got, it's just my cross to bear. It's just my thing. Some of us have drugs, some of us have this or that, and some of us have food. Me, food is a big, pro not problem, theme. It's like it was in my blueprint. You know, I came here knowing as a soul that I would devel develop certain misalignments and then work to bring them back into alignment and then help people to also bring their stuff into alignment. That one of those areas is definitely food because I like it a lot. I like to eat a lot. I'm also married to somebody who's 6'3", 220 pounds, who can just eat whatever he wants to eat and always does and eats so much. And so one of the things I'm trying to work on is just being more conscious about that. And even though I do have this eating disordered history some of you know this, anorexia, bulimia, and I also was very, very, very big at different points in my life. Like there was one time I was over 200 pounds, but I come from, I have this eating disordered background and it might be too much to ask of somebody like me to be so rigorous about a protocol like Upender. I think on some levels, as I was eating only raw and drinking all the water, you know, and, and making sure I had two lemons a day and all that stuff, I, I think it triggered little parts of me, little aspects of me that were really overly hypervigilant and, and uh, disciplined. For example, when I used to starve myself, you know, I take such discipline to starve yourself. It, it really does. You're hungry all the time. It sucks. And there's a, there's a mental volley that's happening all the time about that. And I think by going so hard into like a radical protocol, like up ender, I just wasn't I, good intentions, but it just was beyond my capacity to do. So for those of you following me, I managed about two weeks. Hey, big ups for me. I'm, I'm proud of myself for that. I also managed to lose a few pounds. That never sucks, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably take a year to figure out how this generally disorganized personality can work all of these fantastic aspects into her life as a discipline. And I will update you accordingly. And when I get it all together, when I figure it out for myself, I will put all that information out for you. I think that's all I wanted. Oh, no, no, I also wanna talk about one other thing. Let me get some conscious coffee here. Let's get conscious right now. This is a negative subject. This might be triggering to some of you. And if it is, I understand, pop off, no problem. But there's something pretty big happening out here in the planet, especially in America and in Western countries. There is something big happening, getting the chills, thank you spirit, about to go down. And it's gonna be really gross. It's gonna be really ugly. It's gonna be horrifying and repugnant. It's gonna blow our minds, but it's what we need. It's what we need. And we're already seeing it. They're resisting, but it's coming. And this is the unveiling of the pedophile network in Hollyweird and also in politics. Lots of politicians involved in this as well. Now I'm not talking uh, conspiracy theory stuff. No, this is actually happening. I don't want to send you to any resources where you can look into this, but 
pedophilia, abusing children, abusing kids, abusing women has been a staple in Hollywood for decades. So much so that at least by the 80s, 90s, 70s, there was a pedophile network. Like there was a network of directors, producers, money people who worked on movies and TV that created a ring where they would traffic in children and abuse them. These people are sick. Now, Human Crystal, whose father liked to use nunchucks and had a violence tendency. Human Crystal really doesn't, really, I don't like it, right? We all, a lot of us have kids. I really, I get in my flesh about it. I'm like, they don't need to be on this planet. <laughs> get them off the planet. Or let's have the purge pedophiles, not the purge anarchy, let's have the purge pedophiles. Because in my spiritual and physical awareness, I can't reconcile pedophilia and the abuse of children with uh, processing out of it. I don't, I don't think statistically there's like a lot out there that would say that, that pedophiles can be treated and not go back to it. I think it's possible. This is one of those areas, I'd love to hear what you have to say about this. This is one of those areas because, he, see, we're always called to forgive. We're always called not to judge, but we have to use discernment. We're always called to be operating in love, but where do the pedophiles fall there? You know, my father, <sighs> monstrous personality such as he was, his motto with people who truly corrupted the fabric of consciousness was kill, kill, kill. Where's the button? Let me, nuke, gone off the planet. So that's probably where I get that from. But I don't know what to feel about that. I, I don't really care to think about their process or their healing. Ooh, that means I gotta do some work around that because everybody should be healed. Everybody should be brought into the light. But um, I do feel super awesome about the dam that's about to break. It's already starting. You know, when water's pushing and pushing, it hasn't broke yet, but ooh, it's gaining force. It's gaining steam. That's happening right now. There's a lot of people in the light, a lot of people in the light working to bring this out into the light so we can, well, purge it, but we can get rid of it. We can purify, purify, re return balance unto the system. It's happening. Now, these pedophile rings are connected to the rich, connected to what some would call the cabal, the Illuminati, the 1%. You know, we have all these fear purveyors out there talking about living in a dark matrix with reptilian overlords. Who am I to say? Um, but it's usually connected to a lot of money and usually connected to the rich. And see, there's also disparity in this world, isn't there? Between the rich and the poor. And there's such a divide between the wealth of the wealthiest and everybody else. Not just in third world countries, not just in impoverished spaces, but in America. There is a huge divide between me and what the wealthiest of the wealthy actually have and do not share for the most part maybe what's that guy's name it's escaping me bill gates he's very charitable there's a lot of charitable rich people there's nothing wrong with money it's the love of money that is the root of all evil it's not money money's great money facilitates in fact money is an energy that we came here to experience and learn how to use in an ethical way with integrity so i like money it helps me to do things okay but it's just a tool that's all it is and so there are a lot of wealthy people who absolutely help but there are a lot of wealthy people who don't who hoard the money who keep the money and who purvey in these deep dark demonic spaces of our society i use the word demonic 
not to talk about actual mythological demons, but rather the antithetical oppositional energy of these people and what they're doing. Antithetical to source, antithetical to love. And it's happening and it's been going on for a long time. The Harvey Weinstein stuff came up, right? And we're all horrified. I mean, I guess we've all heard about the casting couch and we kind of knew that that might have happened, but none of us knew the scale and scope of what these actresses had to endure as if it's part of the vetting process. And it's good and Holly Weird is gonna re readjust and realign and it's in the process of doing that now, but it's also spilling over into corporate America and other areas where there's power imbalance. Even though we have a lot of people right now who are bandwagoning, meaning I'm jumping on this bandwagon and I'm judging that person, that person did wrong, they should lose their job, they should be punished. We have a lot of people bandwagoning right now and making it worse and staying in an energy of negativity, which makes it worse. But what that indicates is a pendulum swing. Pendulum was over here in Holly Weird and pedophilia and rape and abuse and predatory behavior. It has swung. They're still there, by the way. They're hiding. They're hiding. But where the darkness lives, where the darkness hides, it's never safe because the light shines into the darkness and the darkness can't even comprehend it. These people, we're getting at the low level ones right now. We go much higher than this. These people are finding themselves in the light, not in their consciousness or vibration, but the lights being shined into the dark spaces. And so we're dealing with the low levels, but we are heading in the direction of the bigger, the more disgusting the more demonic. Spiritual people don't always like to talk about the world and all the things we say. I, I know it's happening, but like I don't want to focus on it because then I get down and then I'm like, then I'm, then I'm just down and I'm not helping. Fair. You should never immerse yourself in a cause or a project or a subject to the degree that you allow your vibration to change. But we also have to be aware of the condition because we're here to change it. You and I are the way showers. We're here to shine those lights. We're here to be the light. When we're the light, when we occupy the light and then go to work, go to our family, help our children, help the community, when we just stand in our light and go to the grocery store, we are changing other people and the space. We are changing the planet. This is why I talk, I want people to listen and hear and find out how they can help. You don't have to be a law enforcement officer to take down Harvey Weinstein. You can just be wherever you are and hold the light and let it shine. The light knows how to do what the light knows how to do. God knows how to do what God knows how to do. As a consciousness, we're ready to purify. This is a great thing. Even though what we see is going to be despicable. Okay? Despicable. We're seeing it because we're clearing it. And that's how we heal. We can't heal if we don't know what's wrong or out of alignment. So we will be hearing about this. We already are hearing about this. Go on Reddit, people. We already are hearing about this and who these people are and good, good. Not in a vengeful way because humans don't know how to handle vengeance because they're human in, in this reality, but good. Good, let it be so. Let it be so. And then on to the next. Let's get into the areas where we are out of alignment. Let's get into the areas where there is unfairness and inequity and let that light shine and let it shine through me. Let it shine through my love. Let it shine through my life and let the right thing be done. That's what I say. And I speak it into existence. Say yes to that. Say it with your mouth. Yes, I agree with that because where two or more are gathered, their source is in the midst of them. And I'm here. Are you here? I dare say we're all here. And so let's light this bugger up. We are living in interesting times. 
I've been saying all along. If you were born at this time, you came here to shift it, my friend. You came here to change it. Some of us will be activists. Some of us will be the ones to change it. Actually, others are just going to be holding space going, yes, yes, for the massive correction. Yes, it is time. Yes, that's what we're seeing. It's really good news. So don't be disheartened by what you're going to see in the news. Don't be disheartened by the purge of the darkness. It must happen in order for us to find our equilibrium, find our balance, and head into this new earth that all of us want to co-create together. We are the engineers, like Prometheus. No, we're not. We are the engineers of the new peace. We are the engineers of the new world. We are the engineers of the new countries. We are the engineers of all of it. That's how powerful we are. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? That's how powerful you are. And you can be a stay-at-home mom living in the country of wherever Ohio and do your part by figuring out for yourself what fills you with light and love. What makes you happy, my friend? Is it... I don't know, is it just being with your children? Is it cooking? Is it reading books, learning, study, knowledge? Is it movement, dance, resonance? What is it that just makes you vibrate on the inside? I like to call this the zing zing. It's the breadcrumb that we feel when we're being led in the right direction. That's the breadcrumb, that's the path to the light. Follow it, Joseph, Joseph Campbell said. Follow your bliss. This is what he means. What brings you joy, no matter how mundane, is your path. Do it. Hold the light. Hold the space. All of us together as there's a massive realignment coming. And it's been happening. And it's going to continue to happen. Let me end by saying, don't be one of those people who bandwagon. Don't be one of those people who witch hunt. That's wrong. Don't be one of those people who buy into the divisiveness, the separation. Don't get all crazy about identity politics, colors of skin. Don't be mad at a whole race of people or a whole kind of person. Democrat, Republican, black persons, black people, white people. Like there's like they're pitting us against each other, especially black and white. That's big right now. And I see a lot of identity politics and reaction to that. A lot of people hating white people and a lot of people hating black people. Hate will never cure hate. Only love will do that. And so don't find yourself caught up when you feel you're getting triggered because you're buying into the political theater of it all, what they want, what they, what they want us to do. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Check yourself, get back into the light. Oh yeah, what was that thing that turns you on? What was that thing that lights you up? Was it cooking, was it moving, was it do that? When you find yourself wanting to witch hunt, wanting to get the torches, who are you to do that? Jesus was walking and he saw a prostitute on the ground and he saw a circle of men surrounding her throwing stones. The men who had just used her services. And Jesus stood in front of her and he said, you who are without sin, cast the first stone. And there were no stones after that. I remember so clearly after the LA riots with Rodney King, being so mad so overwhelmed and overcome by the injustice of that, just as everyone else was. I felt the same with Cecil the Lion, by the way. I was out of commission for two whole freaking weeks after that. But being so overwhelmed by that and and seeing the writing on the wall, of course, like there's gonna be a reaction to that, people. Like, this is not okay. And watching the riots. And I remember a gentleman by the name of Reginald Denny. Do you remember him? He happened to be driving his truck, his business truck, making a delivery, going somewhere, driving through, I want to say Watts, I don't know, could have been somewhere else. 
and they actually, people actually stopped his truck, opened his door, grabbed him, threw him on the ground, and beat the shit out of him. Fucking terrible. And you know, I've looked for the next thing I'm gonna tell you online, I can't find it. I'm wondering if I have misremembered, but I don't think so. Beat the hell out of him, oh my God. And then, all of a sudden, appeared a man, a black man. And I wanna see, I wanna say he had a Bible. And he held it up in front of those kids and he said, stop it. What are you doing? This is wrong. And that black man was the Good Samaritan who helped that white man. I mean, does anybody else remember that? Am I thinking of something different? A different riot, a different protest, but that's who we are. That's who we are. And there was a man on a roadway who was ambushed, beaten, and left for dead, beaten hard, beaten bad, left for dead. And a rich man walked by on the path and saw him there, and he kept walking. I don't want any part of that. I don't know, are these guys still around? I don't really want any freaking part of that. The next man who walked down the path was a priest. And the priest saw the man and he kept walking. <laughs> I don't have time for that. I don't know that guy. I don't know what's going on with that, but it's not my business. That man is not my business. He kept on walking. A third man who was a Samaritan. And in those days, Samaritans were lower class. If, you know, the Hebrews, Israelites had a caste system, they would have, I mean, in, in their culture, in their community, Samaritans were second class citizens. He was the next man on the path. And he saw the man and he stopped. And he went to the man and he said, let me help you. Brother, let me help you. And he tended his wounds and his injuries. He even went so far as to pick the man up, put him on his donkey or his horse, and take him to a nearby inn. And he told the keeper of the inn, take care of this man. I gotta go, I gotta do something, but I'm coming back. I'm gonna be back tomorrow. And I'm, he gave the innkeeper money. He said, here's the money for the stay. And so he can be okay. So this man will be cared for. And if I owe you more because he stays longer, I'll pay it, no problem. The one man whose society would have said had no voice was the one man who helped that person. That's who we are. Feel it? Feel it? That's who we are. Do you see me? Do you see me, my spirit? I see you, I see your spirit. You're not your color. You're not your class. You're not your bank account. I see you, I see you. This is who we are. We are that good Samaritan. We are love. We are mercy. We are compassion. And where our peers would stand and rage against the injustice of it all, we pivot this way toward love. And we let that be our message. We let that be our guide. We let that be our response to the inequity. That's who you are. More and more of us need to do that. Don't believe the hype. Don't believe the way they're rigging it, the programming in this matrix. Don't believe it. It ain't real. It's not real. What you just felt me say, that's real. You know, I talk about all these metaphysical and spiritual concepts, right? But mainly, we're going toward empowerment of the people, all of us as souls. That's where I'm going with this. Entitled soul, stand up. You are super consciousness. Now, a lot of people 
respond to that. And they say, okay, yeah, all right. But I don't know if I can believe that. that so it is not. Well, can you give me some proof besides mythology or storytelling that would allow me to believe that? Yes, I can. Did you feel it? Did you feel it? Your spirit will always bear witness to the truth. Your body will always feel the witnessing and your mind and your emotions will respond in kind. If what I say to you shakes you, if what I say to you resonates in you, then you can, you can trust that because it's your own spirit, your own body that's leading you in the direction, the breadcrumbs, follow that. That's what you have to do. Believe that. You can believe that. If you feel it, man, if you're hearing the truth and you feel it, that's it. You don't need somebody to prove it to you. Okay, as a super consciousness, you don't need that. There's no limitation. Be what you're feeling. Let that be the guide. Because that's how you find your way each and every time. Thank you, my brothers and my sisters, for joining me for Conscious Coffee. I think we're at an hour. Wow. It's going to take me forever to upload, but I'm going to do it. And when I move, we're going to do this more. Okay. Some of you aren't gonna like the longer format. That's fine, I got other videos for you, that's cool. But let's connect, let's talk, let's talk about this. We can talk about this. Let's bring it into the light, all right? I will see you soon, and please never forget that I love you and that I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today, and so do Sunshine and Koa. Well, and Ku, but he's sleeping. Hey everybody, I just wanted to end by inviting you to my free online spiritual community called The Lightworkers Lab. If you're interested in finding your spiritual tribe, go to thelightworkerslab.com. Check us out, learn what we're about, and learn how you can join. Or just go to Facebook and search The Lightworkers Lab and ask to join. I also wanted to mention that every couple of months I offer an in-depth or a comprehensive spiritual or metaphysical class. And if you're interested in taking your spirituality and your connection to a whole new level, go Go to crystallinecompton.com slash spiritual hyphen classes. Check out what's coming up and join if you are so inclined. And to everybody, I just want to say that I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. God bless.